What did you find when you arrived at Newcastle then? Because we all have opinions. We've spoken about, you know, this podcast is about empathy, not opinion. What did you find here that gave you an idea as to why things were a struggle? So I, I prefer to look at it the other way in terms of when I arrived, what did I find that was positive? Because genuinely, that's what I did. Yeah. Did you? So you turned up and you yeah, I wanted made to a conscious effort not to focus on the negative yeah. stuff? Yeah. That's interesting, though, because with yourself, you spent a year focusing on your on your negatives and your problems, yet you turn up here and you think, right, let's let's so focus that, on the positive. But that's why I say I, I sort of have two different views on it with other people and with my team. I'll be yeah. very much positive first. With myself, I'll very much be the other way. Why? I don't know, but that's just how I'm built. So when I arrived, I wanted to focus on the positive. The last thing I wanted to do is come here and go anything negative. Yeah. So what did you find then? So I found a really, really hardworking group of players, a group of players that wanted to do really, really well a group of players that wanted to be coached, which surprised me, um, talented. Um, Why did it surprise you that they wanted to be coached? Well, because I think coaching is, um, coaching is a, it's a, de it's a delicate one with mm. obviously with experienced players. And there, there was a lot of experienced players in the squad. So a lot of players sort of mid twenties, early thirties. Um, and you, you almost go one or two ways with that. It's, be left alone and just play or yeah how can you make me better and mm. I was so so pleased that it was the latter it was like how can you make me better what can you do for me in my career I'm, I'm sort of an open book and a lot of the players were like that and that that gave us a great start point to then bring our work bring our methods and try and improve the team um, and I saw a lot of talented players so for me and and some good lads, you know, players yeah. that wanted to do well. There was no problems with discipline, um, nothing that we couldn't put right with a few s simple rules. And uh, yeah, away we went, and then the team slowly improved. And did you do did you do one on ones with everyone, or was it a group thing? I did one on ones with everyone to start with. I think that's imp really important because yes, I knew three of the players, but I didn't know anyone mm. else. So it was a case of get to know the players, get to know the the family uh, behind the player. Um, I want to know, I wanted to know everything about them, um, a little bit about their history as to how they've ended up here and then how I could help them and, and where they saw their career. Because I think you sort of need to get to know a little bit of the history before you can then help them yeah. refix their goals. And is it true, Eddie, I heard this story about you, so you can either confirm or deny it, that one of the things that you did was find out some of the detail about partners' names, birthdays, things like that. So you could just add to that personal touch of, reminding them that it's your partner's birthday today, happy birthday. And was that part of that one-on-one -on -one period? Yeah, it's something that, you know, I think you, you can see the player train, you can see the player on match day, but then behind it, if you don't know too, if you don't know anything about them yeah. and you're having a conversation with them, you don't know if, whether they have children or not. I, I don't think that's a conversation that's going to last long. Yeah. And I think the player will very quickly think you're not really interested in me. Yeah, You're just talking to me because you, you feel you need to. So I really, I didn't want those types of conversations. I really want to know. Because if I'm going to invest my time and energy to try and make you better yeah, um, and really commit, you know, late at night thinking about training sessions for you, I want to know more about the person I'm doing that for. Yeah. So it's, I think it's a vital part of the job and that that's how sort of close I want to get to my players really. Yeah. And what does that do for you then? Because obviously your job's to win football matches, right? And it, it, I think it's quite rare to hear someone talk about the fact that a player's career is the thing that you almost care about the most. Is it because if you think about their career, you're thinking about them. And if you're thinking about them, then they're improving. And if they're improving, it's it's good for everyone. Yeah, I think it's that step-by-step -step approach. I think I, yeah, obviously I'm in charge of the team and I want the team to do really, really well. Yeah. But I think the best way for the team to do really, really well is for the individual to excel. And if I could, can try and improve those 25 players, each individually mm. and really invest in them, then I think the, the team and the club will never look back. So yes, it's a, it's a sort of a step-by-step -step approach and it's how I've always been. Now, whether that's because my playing career was frustratingly average, um, whether that's sort of formed me as a, as a manager and as a coach, I don't know. Um, possibly because I, you know, I wanted to achieve great things in my playing career and I never quite got there through different reasons. Um, so whether there's a bit in there that, that formed me, I think possibly. And you will have players here with challenging upbringings, 
challenging backgrounds. You know, we talk often that something that's not your fault is still your responsibility. There'll be a lot of players here that carry baggage that isn't their fault, but actually it's there and your responsibility to, to help them with that. So do you manage the players differently depending on what you learn about their background? Definitely. I think you have to. I can't treat all 25 players the same. Yeah. Because as you said, they've all had different backgrounds. They come from different countries. Their, their, their experiences in life and in sport are so different. And their personalities are different. That's obvious. So then you have to treat one person differently to the next to get the best out of them, but also to for them to feel safe in the environment that you're trying to create. And I think having that understanding, as I said, have, being a dad myself has then helped me so much with that. Because I think without that experience, I think their job becomes uh, much more of a challenge. You have the empathy and the understanding of what it's like to be a dad, what it's like to be a son. Um, and that can only help you, mm. I think, in your dealing with the players. And do you get the players to share their stories with each other as well? And the reason I, that I'm asking this is when we interviewed Sia Khaleesi, the South African rugby captain, he said that those exercises of sharing their own stories with each other were like a catalyst to build deeper relationships, stronger bonds that he felt was the springboard for them to go on and win the World Cup. As part of our, our fine system, we have a sort of a weekly meeting or one, once every two weeks now, um, where one player from the squad will then tell his story. Um, now, one of the first things I did was tell mine to the to the group. So first coming out, I thought, well, if I'm going to set this as part of what we do I've got to lead from the front and do it myself and I actually found it uh, quite emotional to do that so you go back and you, you you tell things that you think are relevant and what people need to know about you and we've had some brilliant stories some brilliant um, uh, talks by the players and you find out so much stuff that yeah. even from a conversation between me and you now I could never you could never tell me stuff but then in that format it's almost the players want to tell their story and they're telling things that are very personal to them. But I do believe it brings you closer together and also it gives you an understanding if someone's having a bad day, there might be a reason why he's having a bad day and uh, to, you know, to ask the right questions. And what's the atmosphere like in the room when that's happening? Yeah, you could hear a pin drop. It's, it's everyone's very respectful and understanding that it's going to be their turn at some stage. So give the person all the support that, that they can. And uh, now we've had some really good ones. And, and despite the period of self-reflection for a year and then choosing a job that felt right and selling yourself and then meeting the players and doing all the, the right things, was there a moment before the end of the season where you had the fear that relegation was going to come to this football club and you were going to be part of that? Yeah, I think it was always there. Yeah. I, you know, I, there was no escaping it, especially when we first went in, we had some... You know, the results didn't come immediately, so it was... Did that surprise you? Um, no, it didn't surprise me because I knew how difficult the Premier League is and nothing surprises me in the, the with how hard this league is. So, and things can happen like against Norwich. We had a man sent off very early in the game, as you'll know, against Norwich and we ended up drawing the game and I was really proud of the, the effort, but that was a game that was sort of built up internally and externally as that we had to win to stay up. So we had some early knocks. Um... But then just momentum and the win against Leeds was absolutely key for us. We then had a two week break and then the, yeah, just you could feel the group believed 